हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स वी हैव स्टार्टेड द चैप्टर बैक्टीरियल फोटोसिंथेसिस एंड इन आवर लास्ट लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कस्ड द पॉइंट हैबिटेट एंड एग्जांपल्स ऑफ फोटोसिंथेटिक बैक्टीरिया सो वी हैव सॉन द फर्स्ट पॉइंट दैट इज ऑक्सीजेनिक फोटोसिंथेसिस एंड एग्जांपल्स ऑफ ऑक्सीजेनिक फोटोसिंथेटिक बैक्टीरिया so we will summarize what is oxygenic photosynthesis oxygenic photosynthesis it is the similar process as that of the process performed by the plants okay so oxygenic photosynthesis yahan par photosynthesis hota hai okay the photosynthesis process is similar in plant as well as in cyanobacteria okay and here there is evolvement of or oxygen is evolved as a by product in the oxygenic photosynthesis okay oxygenic photosynthesis mein oxygen ye produce hota hai during photosynthesis process along with the carbohydrate okay example was um, cyanobacteria that is blue green algae and some photosynthetic pigments are also been present to carry out the photosynthesis process now in this lecture we will discuss about the second type called as an oxygenic photosynthesis as the name indicate here there is no production of oxygen as a by product okay so it is a photosynthesis process in which there is no oxygen produced as a by product then what has been produced certain compounds like sulfur organic compounds or hydrogen hydrogen sulfide these are the by products which are been produced instead of oxygen in the unoxygenic photosynthesis then what are the examples of unoxygenic photosynthesis it includes like purple bacteria green sulfur bacteria green gliding bacteria green gliding bacteria means uh, these are the green non sulfur bacteria okay instead of gliding you can use non sulfur bacteria also so green non sulfur bacteria these are flexible filamentous bacteria then phototropic acidobacteria and phototropic heliobacteria these are the examples of an oxygenic photosynthetic bacteria which do not produce oxygen as a by product but they produce different compounds as a by product during photosynthesis reactions plus it uses the bacteriochlorophyll pigment instead of normal chlorophyll okay as we have discussed in oxygenic photosynthesis also that they are also involvement of this bacterial chlorophyll pigment was there okay but plant they use just chlorophyll okay and bacteria they use bacterial chlorophyll this is similar to chlorophyll but just it absorbs the light strongly in the infrared region between 700 to 1000 nanometer okay to carry out the photosynthesis process so it uses the bacterial chlorophyll instead of normal chlorophyll and it involves one photosystem photosystem first to generate atp in cyclic manner if you have uh, saw our previous video i recommend all the students to watch the part 1 video of this uh, oxygenic photosynthesis so that there will be comparative study between these two types oxygenic and unoxygenic photosynthesis okay it is oxygenic not oxidative in oxygenic photosynthesis we have discussed that there were two photosystems okay photosystem 1 and photosystem 2 and the function of photosystem 1 was to generate atp okay and in unoxygenic photosynthesis there is involvement of just one photosystem that is photosystem first to generate the atp in the cyclic manner so we can say that this unoxygenic photosynthesis it is the cyclic process where there is involvement of just one photosystem that is first okay 
this photosystem one it is the reaction center it is nothing but the reaction center okay and that reaction center contains the photosystem one plus they contain some photosynthetic pigments okay that is known as the light harvesting pigments the examples like purple bacteria purple sulfur bacteria green gliding bacteria so what are this bacteria that we will see first is purple bacteria and this purple bacteria is further divided into two types non sulfur and sulfur means purple non sulfur bacteria and purple sulfur bacteria okay so this purple bacteria they contains two types chromatiaceae which produces the sulfur particles inside their cells and second is ectothio rhodospiracy which produces sulfur particles outside the cell okay so chromatias uh, chromatiaceae it produces the sulfur inside the cell and this ectothio rhodospiracy they produce the sulfur outside the cells and they cannot photosynthesize in places that have an abundance of oxygen because here there is no use of oxygen okay uh, there is no any use of this oxygen so this photosynthesis process is um, carried out at the place where there is lack of oxygen okay so therefore it is known as the unoxygenic photosynthesis so first we will see purple sulfur bacteria purple sulfur bacteria they use hydrogen sulfide as their reducing agent instead of using water to photosynthesize to yahan par water ki jagah kya use kiya jata hai hydrogen sulfide okay here instead of water hydrogen sulfide is used during photosynthesis process and this hydrogen sulfide they release sulfur okay पर्पल सल्फर बैक्टीरिया क्या करते हैं एग्जाम्पल कौन से पर्पल सल्फर बैक्टीरिया के एग्जाम्पल ऑफ दिस पर्पल सल्फर बैक्टीरिया इंक्लूड क्रोमैटियम ओके दे इंक्लूड द क्रोमैटियम मीन्स दिस क्रोमैटिसी फैमिली क्रोमैटिसी ओके सो दिस क्रोमैटिसी का एग्जाम्पल है पर्पल सल्फर बैक्टीरिया एंड और यू कैन सी क्रोमैटिसी इट इज अ टाइप दैट इज ओनली नोन एज द पर्पल सल्फर बैक्टीरिया and example of this purple sulfur bacteria is chromatium vinosum okay chromatium vinosum is the example of purple sulfur bacteria so what they do they use hydrogen sulfide instead of using water and produce sulfur instead of producing oxygen that is just simple concept behind purple sulfur bacteria now purple non sulfur bacteria the examples of purple non sulfur bacteria are rhodobacter spheroids and rhodopseudomonas viridis okay rhodobacter spheroids and rhodopseudomonas viridis these are the examples of purple non sulfur bacteria what they do they use hydrogen as their reducing agent do not release the sulfur okay they do not release the sulfur they can tolerate small amount of sulfur and too much hydrogen sulfide is toxic to them so they use the hydrogen as the reducing agent or to carry out the photosynthesis but they do not produce the sulfur and hydrogen sulfide is toxic to this purple non sulfur bacteria what actually mechanism is taking place in this bacteria that is oxygenic and unoxygenic cycles that we will see in our further lectures okay so actually how the electrons are been flown how uh, the how there is generation of atp that all the process we will see in detail in next lecture next is green sulfur bacteria green sulfur bacteria these are non motile and consist of different shapes like rods spirals okay they consist of different geometrical shapes their habitat is they are found in the deep ocean and even can survive in the extreme conditions like extreme hot extreme cold 
okay so they can survive in the extreme conditions like other photosynthetic bacteria so these are the examples of bacteria this is the purple sulfur bacteria okay this is the example of purple sulfur bacteria which is found habitat is lakes they are found on the lakes this pinkish or purplish color these are the bacteria okay they are found in the lakes this is the purple non sulfur bacteria and this is our green sulfur bacteria which are the rod shape then next is phototropic acidobacteria these are found in the hot springs oceans and even caves okay so these bacteria are found in the hot conditions and even in the oceans and inside the caves plus they are found in the soils and they are acidophilic in nature okay they are acidophilic in nature next is phototropic heliobacteria now phototropic heliobacteria these are gram positive and they use light for the energy that are the phototropic heliobacteria these are found in the soils especially water region soil like rice paddies okay so rice as it contains lot of water for the grow so this bacteria are found in the soils which contains some level of water they use the bacterial chlorophyll g instead of using bacterial chlorophyll a they use the bacterial chlorophyll g to carry out the photosynthesis process and they are the photoheterotroph they cannot use carbon dioxide as the primary source of carbon so these are the photoheterotroph but they do not use the carbon dioxide as the carbon source but they use light as the energy source so this is the diagram or uh, not diagram this is the example of phototropic acidobacteria and this is the example of heliobacteria okay so these are the certain examples of non or we can say unoxygenic photosynthetic bacteria what are the applications of this photosynthetic bacteria overall applications can they are used for the water purification they are used as a good bio fertilizers plus we can use as a animal feed we can use it as a bio remediation bio remediation means here we use the microorganisms or any biological uh, things for control of pollution okay that is known as the bio remediation bio means living okay so we have to find the remedy to control the pollution that is the bio remediation so some photosynthetic bacteria they can act as a bio remediation that is completely different process how they act and what is the mechanisms okay so that is the function bio remediation they are also used in the treatment of polluted water then researches at some institute they have engineered this photosynthetic bacteria to produce simple sugars and lactic acid so yes this photosynthetic bacteria are also used to produce simple sugars and lactic acid if we will see the comparative between oxygenic and unoxygenic photosynthesis then in oxygenic they use the chlorophyll a to carry out the photosynthesis but cyanobacteria it uses the bacterial chlorophyll a okay in oxygenic in unoxygenic they uses only one pigment that is bacterial chlorophyll then it may be a g c any type okay so here they use chlorophyll just chlorophyll oxygenic as the process is similar to that of the plant and plant uses the chlorophyll okay just cyanobacteria it use bacterial chlorophyll a and in unoxygenic they use just bacterial chlorophyll to carry out the photosynthesis okay that is the first differentiate point second point you can uh, discuss about the water okay in oxygenic water act as a electron donor theek hai oxygenic mein water act hota hai as a electron donor therefore oxygen is been produced and hence it is known as oxygenic photosynthesis 
but when you will see unoxygenic photosynthesis in unoxygenic photosynthesis there is involvement of hydrogen hydrogen sulfide sulfur or organic matter okay so here this hydrogen or sulfur or organic matter or hydrogen sulfide they act as a electron donor and what has been produced there is no production of oxygen there is no production of oxygen hence it is known as an oxygenic photosynthesis that is the second comparative point third you can say that there is um, use of atp atp and nadph act as the primary products of energy conversion in oxygenic and in unoxygenic only atp act as the primary product of energy conversion okay in oxygenic carbon dioxide is used as a carbon source okay in oxygenic carbon dioxide is used as a carbon source and in unoxygenic carbon sources organic compound or organic matter and carbon dioxide for producing carbohydrates okay so in unoxygenic carbon source is organic compound even carbon dioxide these are being used to produce the carbohydrates or energy okay carbohydrate is nothing but it is the sugar from which we get the energy so that are certain differentiating points up till now we can conclude this points between oxygenic and unoxygenic photosynthesis i hope you might have understood this process of or we can say examples of this oxygenic and unoxygenic photosynthesis thank you